Hey everybody, it's Adam Farkas. Welcome back to another OD Wire TV episode. Now, as you know, we usually on these broadcasts go on and on about uh, daily disposable lenses, right? It's the thing that we talk about the most if you take a look at our history and look back at all the shows. Um, but today I think we're gonna do something a little bit different. We don't often talk about reusable lenses. And I think there's always been sort of this idea that there hasn't been much innovation in the space in reusable lenses in recent years. But despite that, obviously this is a very important product for a lot of patients, perhaps the majority of patients still. Uh, and today we're actually gonna share with you some new technology in the space. And fortunately for us, we have two experts to talk to us about this. We have on one side sort of the, the person who helped create uh, the, the, this lens and a doctor who uses it every day. So you can get a, a you know, sense of what the product is and how you can use it. And today we have Dr. Jessica Crooker with us from Situate Mass. She's the owner of Situate Harbor Vision Source. And she is a, a TPA certified optometrist, uh, runs a full scope practice uh, with a focus on fitting contact lenses and also caring for patients with dry eye. And also here with us today is Dr. Eric Bauman. He's the senior director of R&D at Alcon and he was intimately involved in the development of Total 30. And I wanna remind everyone that this episode of ODYR TV is sponsored by Alcon and Dr. Crooker was compensated by Alcon for appearing today. And of course, Dr. Bauman is an employee of Alcon. So Jessica, Eric, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Happy to join you. Okay, so I guess the big question that I have in looking over this new product and this, this, in this category is why? You know, why did Alcon decide to make an investment in the space and come up with totally new technology? Maybe, Eric, you could speak to that a little bit. Absolutely. You know, and first, I would really acknowledge that the daily disposable re, uh, modality is, you know, be fast uh, continuing to become the most popular. Uh, we know that it's, uh, you know, very convenient, and the uh, compliance is probably higher than other replacement schedules. Um, and so that has garnered the majority of the investment in our R and D in the last, uh, you know, few years. Nonetheless, really, if I were to ask uh, any of my colleagues, you know, do they fit all of their patients in daily disposable lenses? Uh, clearly, they would say no. In fact, uh, just over 60% of contact lens fits in 2020 were in reusable lenses. I think that's about 46% in monthly and 16% in two weekly. So, the reusable segment is certainly a very important one. So we've committed in R&D to, to really up the ante, as it were, in, uh, in performance on reusable lenses. Right. And, you know, Jessica, why do you think that so many people are still using reusable lenses uh, in, in 2022? Sure, it's a great question. What I see in my practice are patients who want to be in these monthly replacement lenses for a whole variety of reasons. The first one that comes to mind is always cost, but cost isn't just the only factor. We'll have you know, patients that are interested you know, for other reasons, and also the easy to replace you know, replacement schedule, easy to remember replacement schedule. It's very easy to remember when you change your calendar or when your phone kind of clicks into the next month that that's the opportunity for you to switch out your lenses. We know that monthly lenses demonstrate better on-type replacement compliance than two-week lenses do. So a monthly lens is always something that I would prefer over a two-week modality. But despite the fact that many patients prefer them for whatever reason, there's always lots of room for improvement. And unfortunately, about 73% of monthly replacement wearers experience discomfort at some point during that lens wear period, some point during that 30 days. Discomfort, we know, often leads to contact lens dropout. So if there hasn't been much focus given to the reusable category, maybe there should be. And so I guess that kind of segues kind of nicely into the product here today. So, you know, we can talk a little bit about the lenses themselves. So total 30 one month replacement contact lens from Alcon. So I guess if you could give us sort of the, the big picture elevator pitch about this lens, what, what would it be? Right. So if I were to characterize Total 30, you know, in a nutshell, it's the first water gradient reusable lens. It's made of Le Filcon A. So it was developed uh, by our scientists specifically for uh, monthly uh, use. Uh, 
Uh, it hasn't been used in any other material or any other lenses or modalities in the past. Um, really what we've done is combined the, you know, taken the legacy of water gradient from Daly's Total One, used some of that science and built a new water gradient onto a 30 day uh, replacement lens. And really the innovation behind that uh, over and above the water gradient is a brand new surface technology that we call Seligent. And we'll get into that in a little bit. So it's a water gradient technology lens that's finally for those reusable lens wearers. I think a lot of us have really come to love the Daily's Total One lens. And I know that's been a huge hit in my office. And so it's so great to have this opportunity to have water gradient technology for these reusable lens wearers. So it's in that same family as Daily's Total One and even Precision One, which we know isn't a water gradient, but still has that permanent water surface, but it is not the same thing. I think that's really kind of clear to get across. It's a totally new technology that was developed to bring these water surfaces to a reusable type of a lens. Right, because you know, cynical people will always say, oh, they're just recycling that existing material that they've had now for several years, but that is not the case here, right? Right, right. That's a great point. You know, I would just add on to that. You know, Daily's Total One is Della Filcon A. And as I mentioned, Total 30, Le Filcon A, totally different material family. They share the common characteristic of, of water gradient, but beyond that, there's really uh, unique differences um, with the monthly replacement Total 30. Right. So let's talk about that for a second then. You know, what are these differences uh, in, in the, the different products and why is it so important that these are actually different products and different materials? You know, I think the answer to that goes back to the modality. So for daily disposable, you know, patients use it once, they discard it. For a monthly lens, really there are multiple nuances to the wear that requires differences in the lenses. The lenses have to be compatible with disinfecting solutions, which certainly isn't the case with a single use lens. Uh, they have to be durable and withstand you know, 30 days of, of rubbing and, and rinsing and application and renewal. And of course, we want a lens that's resistant to bacteria, resistant to deposits. And all of those attributes or characteristics of the wear regimen are what separate uh, total 30 from Daily's Total uh, Daily's Total One. So it's basically, it's not just sort of a, a rebranding of Daily's Total One. You know, you took the lens that existed and then started working with it over a period of years to come up with it, something that's completely different for this particular modality. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> we, you know, took the, the learnings from water gradient, um, which is basically putting a high water hydrogel surface on a silicon hydro hydrogel core, but um, built on that, the features in the science that would make it um, address those items I spoke about in terms of, you know, disinfecting solution compatibility, durability, resistance to deposits. And you'll see here in this image, which is a, a micrograph, you know, artist rendition of the surface. And on the left in the, in the gray area, think of that as the silicone core of the lens, and then extending out as you go to the right, we see these uh, net, what we call nanofibers. And these nanofibers transition from, you know, the water content in the core, which is 55% with total 30, and approach 100% as they blend in with the tear film. And these nanofibers are made of a material called MPC, and they're really responsible for that high water content at the surface and for the lipid and bacterial resistance properties. And, you know, you mentioned the term seligent before, um, you know, can you delve into it a little bit more, you know, maybe talking about the difference between daily total one and, and total 30. So if we see on this image here on the left is a cross section drawing of daily's total one with a, you know, core water content of 33% expanding to over or approaching 100% on the surface. On the right, it looks similar. Um, again, the water content though in the core is different. It's 55% with total 30, uh, but does increase uh, approaching 100%. So what they have in common 
is that gradient or that transition from a constant water content in the core of a lens, and then it gradually increases over a few microns on the front and on the back, completely around the lens to uh, a higher water. What really sets Total 30 apart is the Celligent technology, and that is in the use of these uh, nanofibers of the MPC uh, material. And so, you know, maybe we can speak a little bit about this, this MPC and what it does, you know, specifically when it comes into contact with the corneal epithelium. Corneal epithelium is very complex, as we know, with specialized structural and functional characteristics that allow surface wettability and protection against pathogens and foreign debris. Specifically, there are two different structures of the corneal epithelial cells to look at, microvilli and the glycocalyx. So in this image right here, it's a highly magnified image that's showing the corneal epithelium. And we can see that the epithelium is not smooth, it's undulating. The reddish kind of large red rounded structures are the microvilli, which are projections of the epithelial cells. Adhering to those microvilli is the thin and feathery glycocalyx, a gel which is primarily compromised of mucin secretion from goblet cells. The glycocalyx is hydrophilic and binds a great deal of moisture for the epithelial surface. And if you see, we have a video coming up here, and you can see in the video how the glycocalyx floats freely in the water, kind of like a sea creature or a sea anemone. That brush-like constant gentle motion helps to kind of just sweep away any type of foreign part particles. It's really interesting to see. And so, you know, taking a little bit and zooming in here now, uh, sort of looking uh, at the contact lens surface, maybe we could speak a little bit to this picture as well. Absolutely. So what we see here is a um, scanning transmission electron micrograph of the surface of the contact lens. And what you can see are the fine fibrils, these feathery fibrils of the MPC nanofibers. And you can, you know, recall from the last slide, how similar these appear to the glycocalyx on the cornea. Um, these small nanofibers have the property that they have plus and minus charges in very close proximity. We call it Svitter ionic, but really what it means is the, the electrical charge on these nanofibers is we have plus areas and minus areas, but they're very close together. And what that does biologically is resist lipid deposits, and these are able to float in the tear film, just as you saw in the, the prior video, which also helps resist uh, any other deposits on the lens. And of course, you know, the big issue is that this lens is designed to be worn for 30 days. So the, I guess the question that everyone has is, you know, it looks great at day one, what's it gonna look like at day 30? You see these fine fibers and think, wow, it's really delicate. Um, but like the cornea, it's both durable and delicate. And these fibers, as you see in the photographs here, we, uh, we did some testing. And on the left is a lens right out of the package that shows these uh, nanofibers. And on the right is a lens taken from uh, a patient who'd worn it for 30 days with 30 days of cleaning and disinfection. And you can actually see how durable that surface is, that there's really no degradation or loss of the the form or the integrity of those nanofibers. So they're really in place, even though they're, they're very soft, um, they're also very durable and able to withstand the repeated uh, manipulation with the hands. Yep, and that's pretty remarkable actually, having that lens not only been in for 30 days, but then handled each day, right? And, and solutions were actually used with it. So very impressive. And so I guess the next question that I would have is, you know, is to sort of summarize the benefits of the Celligent technology, uh, because, I think the, the point that I think most people or that I would want most people to know is that this technology really is something different and brand new. Absolutely, and you know, those benefits tie directly back to the points uh, that I made earlier. What are the challenges with a 30-day reusable modality? And those are, you know, the benefit number one is that it is able to resist uh, or prevent the uptake of disinfecting solutions. Whereas in a daily disposable lens like Daily Soto One, we know it wasn't designed or developed to resist uh, that uptake. So the first benefit is compatibility with 
uh, common disinfecting solutions. Uh, secondly, we know that it is uh, very resistant to lipid deposition. Uh, third, to bacterial deposition, and we've done some in vitro studies uh, on that. And then fourth, you know, we talked about the durability. Let's come to lipids uh, for just a moment. We've done a series of very well-designed in vitro studies where we took total 30 lenses and some other reusable lenses, both two week and monthly reusable lenses, and put them in a bath, uh, a solution basically with you know, saline plus a combination of nonpolar lipids, cholesterol esters, triglycerides, you know, things that we find lipid components in the tears and let the lenses soak in that solution, um, pull them out, rinse them, clean them, and repeat it for the equivalent of 30 wear cycles. And then we used a fluorescent stain to stain uh, the lipid. And the top row on this slide shows, you know, if you're looking at the lens face down at 10x magnification, and the amount of yellow is the, the, the amount of fluorescence depicts the, uh, the magnitude of the lipid that is deposited on the lens. It's hard to tell from the top row whether that deposit is on the lens or within the lens. So we went one step further and actually cross-sectioned the lenses. And those are shown on, uh, at the bottom where the amount of you know, fluorescence is seen through the entire cross-section of the lens. And again, uh, as you see both on top and, and on bottom on the left-hand side, there's hardly any discernible lipid in the total 30 lens with that selagit surface. Wow. And if you look actually then moving on to the, the sort of the other important topic at 30 days, right? The idea of bacterial, the bacteria being able to adhere to the lens, um, you know, you also see sort of a similar kind of result. So in addition to the uh, lipid resistance that we you know, measured and saw in the prior slide. We've also done some very elegant studies to investigate the adhesion of bacteria. You know, we spoke about with a reusable lens, we know doctors are concerned uh, about bacteria buildup on lenses. And with this new Celligent technology, these MPC nanofibers, you know, we talked about how those positive and negative charges in close proximity to each other would help, um, you know, prevent that buildup. So, a study was done in our laboratory, so an in vitro study, uh, cycling lenses for 30 cycles in a solution containing five different strains of Pseudomonas. And uh, these were tagged uh, with a fluorescent marker. And after you know, mimicking that 30 days of use, the lenses were photographed um, at 10x magnification. And any green spots that you see, each one of those is a Pseudomonas uh, bacteria that's adherent to the surface. So on the left, I think maybe if you look close, there's one little green spot on the total 30, whereas many of the other lenses that do not have either a water gradient or certainly a you know, celligent type surface to you know, prevent that buildup uh, are showing you know, many more of the bacteria, I think the uh, about 90% uh, less with total 30 with, than with the other lenses. So really a great result, not only on lipid, but on uh, bacteria adhesion. Again, these are representative images based on in vitro bacterial stress testing of lenses after exposure to GFP expressing Pseudomonas originosa and visualized at 10X magnification. Right. And we know lens wettability is an important characteristic of a contact lens. How well do total 30 lenses perform on wettability? We saw in this test uh, where we were looking uh, specifically in, in an in vitro study on the ability of that celligent surface to maintain a stable uh, moisture film. And so we uh, used a method called the eye drop method. And in that lenses were submerged in phosphate buffered saline mounted on a curved holder about the curvature of the lens and then uh, lifted or raised up out of the, you know, above the surface and a high resolution camera was, uh, was mounted to 
watch the you know over time with a timer going any breaks up break up or de-wetting of those lenses and you'll see in the video that um, the total 30 lens gradually over a long period of time you know start to see the first breakup whereas many of the other lenses you know starting at around six seconds and then between six and 12 to 15 seconds we see water breakup spots on all of the other lenses whereas you know with the total 30 it's it's all the way out to 27 seconds before we see that break and i guess the one other thing that people also you know are concerned with is sort of uh, the, the softness of the lens and i know if we pull up this chart you might be able to speak to that as well i can do so on this chart you know we spoke earlier of both um, softness and we know from water gradient from daily's total one that that surface is very lubricious and we know there's a very high correlation between lubricity and lens comfort. So on the left is data depicting the surface modulus of total 30 in comparison with other lenses. You'll see in the blue, that's actually the indentation modulus of a human cornea. And so we see total 30 has approximately the same softness or modulus is the corneal epithelium, which is about, you know, five times softer than the uh, the next closest lens. Whereas on the right, this is lubricity, so it's one over the coefficient of friction. So the more lubricious the lens is, the less interaction uh, during the blink with the delicate tissues of the conjunctiva and the cornea. And again, total thirty. Uh, in this case, is about three times more lubricious than uh, than the other lens types. Right, and again, softness and lubricity. Jessica, maybe you could review from the patient's perspective why those two things are actually really important to contact lens patients. Sure. So, softness and lubricity are really important when it comes to contact lenses. Every time we blink, our eyelids rub across the cornea. So these tissues need to be soft and lubricious so they don't get irritated. If you insert a contact lens, then it also needs to be soft and lubricious for that very same reason, to avoid irritation during those interactions with the ocular tissues. We blink over 14,000 times a day, so that's a lot of potential interactions. So that's why it's so important. With superior softness and lubricity, the total 30 lenses were designed to minimize mechanical interactions with those delicate tissues. Remember, those polymer nanofibers are on both sides of the lens core, the side that faces the cornea and the side that faces the outside world, which of course is what's interacting with the eyelid during every single one of those blinks. So Jessica, for people who haven't actually uh, tried uh, the Total 30 uh, lens yet, how is the lens like compared to say like DT1, which people have used a lot over the past decade, if, if you're gonna compare it, uh, those two lenses to each other in terms of the ease of insertion and removal? Sure. So I've had a lot of patients that try the total 30 lens that as soon as they take it out of the packaging and put it on their finger, they'll say right away, oh, this lens feels nice and sturdy. And as soon as they go to kind of put it in, whether they're used to a daily disposable lens, a two week or a monthly lens, every single time people said, oh my gosh, that went in really easily. So I haven't had any complaints at all. I've actually heard only good things as people just go to insert the lens. And it's so funny, immediately when they put that lens in, they'll say, you know, oh, this feels great. This feels like I can't even feel that lens in there. So I'm getting some really great feedback. I always like to try all the new lenses myself when I get them in. I'm usually a daily's total one wearer myself. And I noticed when I tried the lens myself, the total 30 lens, I did not have any issues, no signs of any problems at all from either myself or for any of my patients. Great. And any other sort of main features we should know about total 30? I would add one thing uh, that's important in contact lenses, and that's you know, an ultraviolet light absorber. So total 30 is a class one, what we call class one UV absorber, which means it absorbs uh, over 90% of UVA rays and over 99% of UVB. But in addition, uh, Total 30 is the first lens that I'm aware of that will be on the market that has a high energy visible light uh, absorber. So with that, what that means is the lens absorbs about 34% of the light in the 380 to 450 millimeter uh, wavelength range.
And both of those are definitely very important. There are definitely some caveats that we need to make clear when we're talking about light filtering in contact lenses. First of all, UV absorbing contact lenses are definitely not substitutes for protective UV absorbing eyewear, such as UV absorbing goggles or sunglasses, because they do not completely cover the eye and that surrounding area. So I always make sure to make that clear to my patients. The patient should continue to use UV absorbing eyewear as directed from their eye doctor there. And there's no demonstrated clinical benefit to a 34% reduction in visible light at wavelengths below 450 nanometers. Well, great. So, you know, I, I think this is, a, it's been a useful discussion today, you know, having water gradient now finally trickling over to uh, a reusable lens, which is going to be a great option for people who really don't want it to make the move to daily disposable. So I guess um, my question, I guess, and this would be directed to Jessica, is, you know, what kind of patients would make sort of the ideal candidate for this lens? What's, what's, if you had to visualize a person who's going to be using it, who, who is that person? I think that Total 30 is a great lens for pretty much anyone who's interested in a lens that's in the reusable category. For any type of a patient who's new to contact lenses, that would be actually my go-to lens to fit a new lens wearer in. I think it's just the, the perfect lens for anybody that is looking for that type of a lens you know, modality. Excellent. And before I let you guys go, I'm going to put up a slide so everyone can see um, the technical specifications of the lens because people will always ask me and they always do, you know, what parameters does it come in and so forth. Um, so I just want to put this up here so everyone can see it one last time. Jessica, Eric, thank you so much for being here today and sharing all this with us. And again, um, you know, the conversation uh, about this lens will continue online. So, so thank you again for being here. Thank you. Thank you.